So the last Emira update we provided was in February of this year when we took the car for a test drive. So where's my Emira? Why isn't it featured on the channel yet? So originally my Emira was due to be built in October of 2022 and was ready for collection or due to be ready for collection in November 2022. So what's happened? Well before we get into that let's roll back a little bit and talk you through a chronological history of events that's taken place to get us to the position where we are now. So first of all I ordered the car in June of 2022 and I paid the first deposit when I made that order. Then I configured the car in July of 2022 and I paid the second deposit. At that stage, I was told that my car would be built in October of 2022 and would be ready for collection in November 2022. Then I had an update email from Lotus to say that my car would be delayed by a month. The car would be built in November of 2022 and would be delivered in December of 2022. Now at that stage, I thought, OK, well, that's winter time. I'm not too keen on that. The car was going to be kept outside. It wasn't going to be kept in a garage. So I asked if it was possible for me to collect the car in spring of 2023, so around March, April time. They said, yeah, that would be no problem, but I would lose my place in the queue. In effect, they couldn't guarantee the time when I would collect the car. It would be sometime next year, and I wasn't happy with that. I wanted to get the car as soon as possible to, well, deliver content for you. So I said, no, OK, I'll stick with that. I'll, I'll stick with the build process of being November and collection in December. Then in October, I got another update email from Lotus saying, we realise we haven't given you a firm collection date, but hey, if you watch Harry's Garage, his latest in Mirror video, um, that provides an update and gives you a, an, an appreciation of what the delays have been. And in effect, he had an interview with Matt Windle where they talked about all the delays that have been caused by COVID, etc., etc., with parts being delivered. And he walked down a production line and you saw his car in build process, the chassis of his car. So, OK, not the best way to be delivered an update on your £80,000 Amira, but you know, you have to roll with it. And all these communications, by the way, as I said, were by email. They weren't by call. So it was it was just them sending an email to you. So you've ordered an £80,000 car and they're sending email updates, continual delays. And then when my car was due to being built in November of 2022, I re received another email from Lotus. And this email said, um, sorry, we're not going to be delivering your car this year. It's actually going to be delivered in March of 2023. And I thought, OK, that's sort of around the date when I was hoping to collect the car anyway, with the delays that they'd already given me because I didn't want to collect the car in, win in the winter time. So I thought, OK, but it was yet another delay. And that was an additional delay of another five months. So, you know, when the car was originally supposed to be built in October of 2022 and delivered in November of 2022, we're down now to the car possibly being built in February, March and had been delivered the following month. So it's not great, is it? Now, all the time in parallel to all this, I was in communication with Lotus with regards to how the car was going to be funded. I'm not a wealthy person. I can't afford to just outlay £80,000 like that on a, on a second car. I'd already put the deposit down on the car and I was going to fund the car in, in multiple different ways. I was going to fund it with a part outlay of cash. And secondly, I was going to fund it by financing the remainder. So. The finance options I was looking at was either a bank loan or a finance option from my bank, or it was going to be from one of the third party financing companies like Magnitude and Finance, etc. With all those options, apart from the bank loan, it required Lotus to deliver the invoice in the third party's name. So with regards to financing, always the finance companies want the invoice in their name because pretty much they own the car. So they're financing the car, they own the car and you're paying back them to then regain ownership of that car when you've paid the full amount. So the, the invoice needed to be in their name and, the, and Lotus just wouldn't deliver this. They just wouldn't provide that option. So the only other option and the only option it came down to for financing the car was through Lotus, through their Lotus third party scheme. And that just wasn't viable. The, the, the percentage rates on their finance scheme just wasn't viable with what I could get out there outside there in the marketplace especially with regards to a bank loan or working it through my bank. And the best option for me with my bank was to use their car finance option. And their car finance option at the time provided me about 4% APR, which was very good. Of course, everything's changed now with the, the recession that we're in. But at the time, 4% um, was very, very good. But the bank needed the invoice to be in their name. 
it's no good it being in my name and Lotus would only provide the invoice in the prospective owner's name, in other words, in my name. There was no way that they would go back on this. There was no way that they would resolve this or change this. That was it, hard and fast. I'm sure all other people who've tried to purchase Emiras or have purchased their Emiras, Emiras have come up against this situation as well and they've either had to pay the whole lot in cash or they've had to find um, some bizarre way around it, um, probably selling, they're probably financing another car that they have and then using that cash to pay for the Emira full in full. So I, I don't know what the other options that other people have used, but it's got to be a variation of that because they couldn't use a third party financing scheme. I mean, that is just crazy. Lotus were just not helpful at all in resolving that situation. It was just carte blanche, carte blanche no, not possible. Here's our finance scheme, use that. And of course their finance scheme was about three or 4% over and above the percentages that I could get on APR, which just wasn't feasible for me. I mean, you know, it just it brutalized you financially to do that. It'd just be an idiot to do it. And there's no way I was gonna do that. So that was going on in parallel to all these, all these delays I was getting from Lotus. I was trying to find out how I was gonna fund the car and it just wasn't gonna be viable. Um, it was just going to be either through Lotus Finance Scheme or not at all. With all these delays and with this financing situation and then the current economic downturn hit in parallel to all this situation going on and interest rates went a lot higher, to so, so much so that you're looking at around 10, 11, 12%. The perception is once you get past around 5% on APR, it's not viable to finance a car anymore um, because you're just paying too much in interest and then the balloon payment gets extortionate and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, depending on the course of how you're financing the car. So it got to that point and still the communication was bad from Lotus. I, I got to March, nothing happened. Um, and then I was, I was delivered an email as an option to continue and to actually sign off the car, um, to, to finalize the car and, to, and to, to, to pay the remainder of the car. But there was still no confirmation that my car was going to be delivered in March or April. And the perception was that they were sending these emails out to prospective owners because they couldn't guarantee their, their delivery slots. So they were getting them to pay for their cars up front to lock them in. And I thought, Nah, this isn't happening. No, I'm not going with this. Everything that was happening with regards to the constant delays, uh, no firm build date, no firm collection date, and then this situation with the financial climate and, the, and them not allowing f um, an invoice in the third party finance company's name, then I've just, I just had enough at that stage and I decided, okay. It got to last month, September, when I'd had enough of all this situation and I just thought, that's it, I've had enough. I sent them an email and I cancelled my order and I did get my deposit back quite promptly. Now, I know some people haven't had their deposits back so quickly, but I did actually receive my deposit back quite promptly. So, so that was quite good. Um, and subsequently to that, uh, about, about a month, uh, I think it was about um, a couple of weeks later, I then had an email from Lotus to say, we're really sorry that you've um, decided to cancel your order. Hey, we've got all these other cars at, uh, at some dealerships that are actually there with no mileage that are ready for collection. They're all built, ready to go. How about having one of these cars? Clearly, everybody was cancelling their orders. And so they had loads of cars at dealerships that just weren't, that had been cancelled and weren't going to be collected. So they offered me the option of taking one of those cars. And by that time, prices were falling. The, the, the downturn in the economy was hitting quite hard. Um, and interest rates, as I said, were already high. The option of financing the car just wasn't really feasible. So, you know, I'd made my mind up then that I wasn't going to buy the car um, for that price around this period of time. So what happens now? Because the Amira was going to be used as a daily driver for us. And we we're going to obviously feature that and vlog it for you um, for the channel. There's various options now because of this downturn in the economy, as opposed to a seller's market, which it previously was, I mean, all cars were overs, as you know, it's actually changed around quite a bit. A lot of the cars were out of reach have actually come into reach. So for example, the first option probably is gonna be a Porsche GT3, because they've dropped down now. You can get a 991.1 GT3 around the price of a brand new Amira. So if around 80 to 82,000, maybe a little bit more, you're looking at a 991.1 GT3. To me, it's a no brainer, a 991.1 GT3. You know I love that, I featured it on the channel already, a 991.1 GT3, awesome cars much more capable than a mirror. I'm not knocking the Amira. I love the Amira when I took it for that test drive. I absolutely love the Amira. I love the way it drove. But when you're looking at a Porsche GT3 or a Lotus Amira, I'm sorry, but the Porsche GT3 wins. So that's one option. The other option, of course, is still purchasing a mirror because I still really love the cars. I still really like the car. 
but a second-hand mirror. Now the second-hand market for a mirror is quite interesting. As of today, in October 2023, there are over 62 Emiras on AutoTrader, over 62 Emiras available for sale. And the prices are dropping. You're looking at Emiras now in the late 60s, so 69, 69, 70,000 pounds with around 700 to 1,000 miles on the clock. You know, that's massively different. And they've, they've got full black pack, um, sports, suspension, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So they've got all the options there, but they're about 10 or 11,000 pounds cheaper than the actual retail market price how things have changed. So that's a possibility as well. Maybe in a couple of months, look at how the market is. I think they will drop between say 55 and 65 within the next few months. That is a possibility. So I'm gonna keep watching the market and I'm gonna see where the Amira prices lay in the next few months because that's gonna be a win-win for me. I mean, maybe this situation is all a blessing in disguise. The fact that I couldn't get my Emira because Lotus were messing me around and they wouldn't provide the, the invoice in the third party finance company's name. That could be a benefit to me because instead of then paying 80 odd thousand pounds for the car and obviously having the finance scheme associable to that with the interest rates etc i then could be looking at getting the car for around um 50 55 to 65 thousand in a few months time who knows um, it's not great obviously for the people who own these cars already but the market is sliding at the moment so let's see where it goes at the moment it looks like it's going to be a porsche gt3 or a lotus and mirror but a second hand lotus and mirror and it's probably only going to have at the most a couple of thousand miles on it on the Amira. I mean, that's a no brainer. That means that the cars run in and probably all the foibles will have been fixed. Any recalls would have, would have taken place and all, all the foibles would have been fixed that could have occurred on the car or that may have occurred on the car. So it's a no brainer. That's a lot better position to be in. And I'll be gaining the car for around 10 to 15,000 pounds cheaper than buying it retail. It's a no brainer. It's an absolute no brainer. Keep watching to see whether I go for a Porsche TT3, secondhand Lotus Amira, or maybe an outlier. Thanks a lot for watching guys, and we'll catch you in the next video.